In a world where love and darkness collide, where spooky season fades into the cold embrace of winter, there are those who stand alone, abandoned, heartbroken. Meet Bella, abandoned after spooky season. She thought she found her eternal love, but when the pumpkins turned to rot, her heart shattered like glass. She's not the only one. Many goth partners like Bella are left behind after spooky season, yearning for the darkness to embrace them once more. But there's hope. Introducing Goth Love, the organization that believes every goth deserves a forever home. Our dedicated team works tirelessly to match these beautiful souls with loving companions who appreciate the art of the macabre and understand the beauty in the shadows. We're here to help these lonely spirits find new homes, to help them embrace their darkness once again. We match goths like Bella with loving individuals who appreciate their gloomy charms, where every day is like Halloween. Your support can make a difference in their afterlife. Goth Love invites you to open your heart and home to a goth in need. Visit our website and complete the application to be paired with one of these unique dark flowers. Let the darkness of love envelop you both. Visit us at gothlove.com or call us at 1-800-GOTH-LOVE. Together, we can bring a little more darkness into the world. Goth Love. Keeping love spooky. Sponsored in part by Cursed Closet, your one-step destination for gothic fashion with inclusive sizing and unbeatable prices. Welcome to the world of gothic allure. Embrace your individuality with their enchanting collection of edgy clothing and accessories. Unleash your inner darkness, embrace the beauty of the shadows, and build your own cursed closet. Enter. Oh, hello. You must be my next interview, right? Wonderful. Thank you for coming in. Welcome to Goth Love, the place where we find goths, people who will really love and accept them for exactly who they are. Now, I have your preliminary online application here. Thank you for filling that out. But today we're going to go a little more in-depth into getting to know you and what you might be looking for in a goth partner, all right? All right. Now, I do, just before we begin the interview, I do just like to preface this by saying that we are not a place that is here for the novelty of it. Unfortunately, there is quite a common stereotype, especially online these days, where people talk about how cool it would be to have a goth girlfriend and and then they post pictures of girls who are just wearing black clothing and dark lipstick and are maybe a little bit edgy looking and that's not what it actually means to have a goth girlfriend <laughs> and then there are people who also think that they want a goth partner girlfriend or partner just for the novelty of it and then when they're bored they just get rid of them that's why many of my clients have shown up here. So I just, I really like to stress that we are not a place for your fantasy to just gawk at different goth people and have some eccentric arm candy for a little while. These are people just like you. They might have different lifestyles and different styles than you, but they deserve love just like you, all right? We are in the business of helping people find love not an eclectic accessory. Okay? All right. I don't like to harp on that too much, but it is just something that I feel passionate about. 
So as long as you are here actually looking to make a real life connection, then you're in the right place. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Well then let's get on with the interview, shall we? We're going to start with talking about you. Start out with some basic things and then we're going to get a little more personal, a little more specific. And this is just so that we can match you with the very best goth partner for you. All right. Now, I would really highly encourage you to answer all of the questions. No one is going to see these except the team that actually does the matchmaking. The goth that you get partnered with won't see them, don't worry. But we do just, you know, we really know what we're doing with these questions to help you get the best, most successful match. And of course, it's all completely confidential. But if there is a certain question that you don't want to answer, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm not going to force you. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Well then, let's get started, shall we? Okay. This first section is about you. And then we'll go into sort of what I call the speed round, where I just say this or that, and you tell me one, or yes or no, when I say something. And then we'll talk about what you're looking for in a goth significant other. All right. Okay. So, let me start out. Let me just confirm your name, please. All right. And what are your pronouns or identity preference? All right, good. Do you go by any nicknames and all? All right. And what is your age and birthday, please? Okay. Good. And how about the gender identity preference for your goth significant other? Or if you don't have a preference, you can say that too. All right, wonderful. Could I get you to just really quickly confirm your phone number and email so we can contact you with your matches? Okay. Good. And email? Mm-hmm. All right. Good. And what is your current occupation? All right. Interesting. And roughly how many hours a week do you work? Is it part-time, full-time, more than full-time? Okay. And would you say that you're relatively financially stable? Not a good idea to go into a brand new relationship with all of these financial troubles. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you have to be completely debt free or incredibly wealthy, but it's a good idea to at least be somewhat stable. Good. All right. And what is your highest level of education? All right. Good. And what degree was that in? Interesting. All right. All right, so that's sort of the basic information. Now I'm going to ask you lots of questions to get to know you, all right? Some of these will be just kind of basic get-to-know-you questions, and then some of them will go a little more into the goth culture side of things, okay? All right. Where did you grow up in, in a, a city, suburb, country? Okay. Would you like it there? Yeah, that can be a complex question. <laughs> All right. On a scale of one to ten, how important is your family to you? Okay. Do you have any siblings? And what's their age and gender identity? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, on a scale of one to five or so, how familiar would you say you are with goth culture? One being, I don't know, I just kind of like it. Or five being, yes, I am fully well versed with the beginning of the goth culture movement and the history and the subcultures and blah, 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 blah. Okay. 
No, it's not a requirement to be super well-versed, but you do obviously need to be open and accepting of it. <laughs> I would assume that you are, since you're here. Good. All right, what are your beliefs in the paranormal? All right. Yeah, that's fair. Have you ever had any paranormal experiences yourself? Hmm. Really? Fascinating. Oh, don't worry, I'm a fast writer. Go ahead. Do you play any musical instruments at all? All right. Mm hmm All right. What are some of your hobbies or interests? Mm hmm Really interesting. I've wanted to try that for a while. All right, any special, unique talents we should know about? Really? Interesting. All right, do you have any pets or do you like pets? Okay. Any types that you like versus those that you don't like? Okay. Would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Okay. Right, it's not really about do you like people or not. I think that's quite a common misconception these days. It really just has to do with how you replenish your energy. Do you replenish by being alone or do you like to replenish your energy by being around people? Yeah, that's really all it means. All right. What is your favorite holiday? Good answer. All right, what are a few adjectives that your friends or family would use to describe you, do you think? Okay. I can see that. Get a good sense for people in these interviews. Any others? No, that's a good list. All right. Do you have a large or a small friend group? No judgment either way. All right. A lot of these questions, there's not a right or wrong answer. We just want to make sure that we know so that we can pair you with the right person. Of course. All right. Do you have any tattoos? And if you do, what are they and where are they? Okay. How do you feel about tattoos on a partner? Right. Good. It's not really your say. It's not your body, is it? Do you like to frequent cemeteries or haunted houses? Ghost tours. Yes, that would too. Do you have a bucket list? All right. What sort of things are on there? You can just name a few if you'd like. Hmm. Mm hmm That's a good one. All right. What accomplishments in your life are you most proud of? What would you say that you value most in your life? 
I know that's a bit vague. You can you can think about it for a moment. <laughs> That's a good one. Some of these questions are quite deep and philosophical, and then I feel like people are afraid to give an answer that's too simple. <laughs> it's not really about that. We're just trying to get to know you. Alright, and where do you see yourself in five years? Again, that can be a difficult question as well. Just, you could even just say happy, secure, whatever you want to say. All right, good. Hmm. All right. How would you describe your fashion or clothing style? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'd say that's pretty accurate. What is your greatest fear? Hmm. Understandable there. Right, what would you say is your greatest strength as as a person? Maybe not in a work environment, but just as a person. What's your greatest strength? All right. I bet you know what my next question is. What is your biggest weakness? Good to be honest with ourselves. Alright, on a scale of one to five, how much do you enjoy the outdoors? Okay. What is your favorite thing to do at night? Besides sleep, I guess. Hmm. -mm. Good answer. When you're feeling down, what works best to cheer you up? Or do you want to be cheered up? All right. Mm hmm. All right. What is your favorite food? And do you have any special diets? Are you, are you vegan, vegetarian, any of those kinds of things? Okay. Good to know. Is it important to you that your partner is part of that same diet lifestyle? Okay. Alright, to be honest here. On a scale of 1 to 10, how messy are you? That's fair. That really depends for me. Kitchen and, like, living areas, I'm rather neat, but if it comes to my creative spaces, then I tend to get rather messy. <laughs> so, I guess it depends. Alright, what do you find most appealing about dating a goth? Specifically a goth. Alright. Okay. How do you tend to act when you're stressed? Alright. Do you prefer to be left alone or comforted? How do you handle disagreements? All right. What is your tolerance for dark humor? All right. When you're feeling down, would you rather receive a little gift from someone you care about, or an encouraging handwritten note. All right. Do you know how to cook? And can you cook well? 
right? How do you feel about loud music? Okay. Well, it doesn't apply to every goth, but there are those who very much like their traditional goth music. All right, now this one, just very, very briefly summarize, it's all right, we don't need to get into it too much, but what are your political views and how passionate are you about those views? All right. Yeah, just a scale of one to 10. How much do you care about politics, I guess? Okay. How important is it to you that your significant other shares your political views? Sure. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Part of goth culture is admitting that, you know, we don't fit into the mainstream of society and, and finding a society where we are free to express ourselves and live free from those societal norms. Now, some goths like to just completely remove themselves from society, but other goths look at some of the injustices in society and can't help but get involved, especially because they don't care if they're ostracized or outcast for being outspoken. Some of them are very outspoken. Others are not. So it's just, you know, a good idea to know. Have you ever participated in any peaceful protests, marches, demonstrations, things like that? And if so, what were their causes? Hmm. All right. All right. Anything else we should know about you? Just sort of basic information. And we'll talk about more relationship things, but just about you personally that we haven't covered. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to go into just some fun sort of speed round versions, I guess. First, I'm going to ask you just yes or no. So I'm just going to say a, a certain word or phrase. You just tell me, yes, I like it. No, I don't. All right? Don't think too much about it, but just your, your first reaction, okay? Snakes. Okay. Loud goth music. Okay. Decorating with skulls. Right. Bats. Horror movies. EDM music. I know that M stands for music, but if you just say EDM, people assume it's a fetish thing. It's not. It's electronic dance music. Haunted houses. Cyberpunk. Live concerts. Houseplants. Graveyards, astrology, classical music, dark poetry, incense, art museums, nightclubs. All right, that's the end of that section. Now we're going to do another rather quick one. This one is the this or that section. So again, I don't want you to think too much about it, just your first instinct, all right? Doesn't mean that you hate one and love the other or something like that, but just if you had to choose which one, just as quickly as you can, I suppose, all right? Don't overthink it. All right. Are you a morning person or a night person? Black cats or ravens? Taking a risk or playing it safe? Black leather or black lace? Plan ahead or go with the flow? Skulls or crosses? Summer or winter? 
late nights or early mornings. And this next one is very tricky. I, I know, just whichever one you are slightly more inclined towards, all right? Edgar Allan Poe or H.P. Lovecraft? I know, it's a tough choice. All right. Full moon or new moon? Spirits of the dead or vampires? Beach or mountains? Country or big city? Studs or spikes? Coffee or tea? All right. Wonderful. That's the end of those little speed round sessions. Feel free to take a breath for a moment if you would like. All right, now this next section is going to talk about what you are looking for in a relationship, specifically the, the relationship goals, all right? Okay, just a few questions to this section. What is your end goal in meeting a goth significant other? Are you looking for something more casual? hoping for something long-term, all right? How do you think your family and friends would react to you having a goth significant other? Mm. All right. Any major deal breakers? Sure, yeah, that makes sense. All right, and then sort of the same line of that question, but any non-negotiable traits they must have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, makes sense. Do you tend to move fast in relationships or take things more slowly? All right. What is your worst fear in a relationship? Yeah, that's fair. It's the reason they call it falling in love, right? Because it's scary. What is your opinion on marriage? Again, no judgment. Just wanted to know. All right. Again, no judgment either way, but would you ever consider an open relationship? Okay. Are you willing to date long distance, or would you like us to limit your matches to those close by? All right, and what sort of, like, what's your range for that? How many miles away? Like 20 miles, 50 miles, 100 miles? All right, good. Very good. Now, the fun part. Let's talk about your ideal goth significant other. Now, many of these things are going to be preferences, and we will do our very best to match up as many as possible. But, of course, you know, it's good to be open to who we match you with, too. No one is going to be absolutely perfect. We're not looking for the perfect person, but we are looking for the person who's perfect for you. And sometimes that might be something a bit unexpected, besides what we think we want. But there's nothing wrong with having certain preferences, certain things that you like and dislike, all right? All right. So, first of all, which sort of goth subculture would you say you are most attracted to or most interested in? Well, yeah, of course, within the, the culture of goth society, there are all kinds of different subcultures. I mean, they're not all black and white, hard and fast. There's definitely some, some overlap of those, but you've got your 
trad goth, your traditional goth, that sort of focuses on the beginning of the goth movement back in the late 70s, early 80s. They have sort of an emphasis on death and the macabre, and also a very strong connection to gothic rock music. Otherwise, you have the romantic goth, which maybe focuses a little more on dark poetry and sort of Victorian Edwardian styles, things like that. Then, of course, there's the cyber goth, a little more modern, futuristic. They often also incorporate colors like neon, neon green, neon pink, or blue, and sort of cyberpunk ideas into their style as well. Where you have the vampire goth, you have pastel goth, that's a little bit more light and upbeat. You have the perky goth, you have new goth, you have soft goth, you have the hippie boho goth, you have witchy goth, you have fairy core goth, steampunk goth, cabaret goth, death rocker, geek goth, corp goth. Any of those sound more appealing to you than others. It's all right if you don't have a strong preference, but if there's a few that you think are more your cup of tea than others. All right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there definitely is some overlap between those two. Like I said, all of those titles are not necessarily hard and fast. The whole point of the goth culture is that it is a counterculture to get out of having to fit into a little box. So it wouldn't make much sense to just throw a goth into another box. But, you know, everyone has their preferences, their tendencies when it comes to style and lifestyle, things like that, too. All right. Any others that you don't really think of as, as what you're looking for? Just perfectly fine. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Good to know. All right. And again, like I said, there's overlap, so we'll do our best to pair you with those that you find the most attractive and not the other ones. All right. Now let's talk about your dream goth's appearance. Again, appearance is not the most important thing when it comes to a relationship, but everyone has preferences and that's not wrong. <laughs> it's important for that initial attraction, of course. So hair, length, color, eye color, height, anything like that that you think of, that you kind of picture. All right. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about colored contacts? There are some goths who very much like to change the color of their eyes with their mood. Okay. Now, of course, all of this sort of aesthetic thing, as you get deeper into a relationship, you're not always going to see your goth significant other with all of their makeup on and all done up. <laughs> There's a real person under there too. So, you know, it's important to understand that the makeup does come off too. All right. Anything else physical characteristics that you can think of? Sure. Again, no judgment. We'll do our best to match you with the best possible match here. All right. What would your dream first date be with a goth? Good answer. All right. And how about a dream vacation? A little ways into the relationship. Okay. Would you prefer someone who's more artistic and musical or someone who's more active and sporty? Okay. Do you have a dream job type or, or field that they might work in? Okay. 
What traits do you most value in a potential significant other? Hmm? Sure. All right, any special talents it would be fun if they had? Singing, playing an instrument, writing, drawing, painting, anything like that? All right. Are you willing to support them if they do have interests that are not necessarily your interests? Good. How often would you like to see your goth significant other at the beginning of a relationship? Once a week, a few times a week, every day, once a month? Okay. Right, of course that will change if, if the relationship progresses, but just to start out. Are you the jealous type? Right. Do you enjoy touring museums and art galleries with a significant other who likes those things? Okay. Well, I mean, it's important to ask because some people, even if it's maybe not their preference, they say, well, you know, if my partner really likes those, like, I could do one or two here and there. And then there are some people who would say, please do not make me go to a museum. I will gouge out my eyes from boredom. So, you know, it's just a good thing to know. What is a good gloomy to cheerful ratio? All right. How outspoken should they be? Mm -hmm. No, that's fair. All right, so now I want you to think if this relationship has, has gone on for a little while, a, a few months, or maybe up to a year or something, what would be the perfect Saturday night with your significant other? Not a first date, but just a nice established relationship. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty nice to me. What would be a good staying in together to going out together ratio? Sure. All right. Three adjectives for their ideal personality. All right. Mm -hmm. One more. What time frame do you think is right for you to meet their extended family and vice versa for them to meet yours? Okay. Sure. You know, if, if family is very important to you, that might happen sooner. If they're less so, or you think they might be a little judgmental, then it's maybe nicer to wait a little while. Just important to be on the same page about those kinds of things. Some of these questions... Of course, there, there can be different circumstances, but it's also just a good idea for you to be thinking about these things so that you can communicate them with a potential partner, you know. Many differences can be solved with just proper communication. Being willing to have the conversation. Would you prefer that they have a large or a small friend group? Right. If you were to someday live together, what percentage of the domestic chores would you want them to help with versus what you do? Good. That's fair. Of course, there are lots of other questions about what it actually means to live with somebody. <laughs> it's very different dating someone when you live separately versus dating them when you live together. Of course. We won't get too much into that. That is for you to decide if it ever gets to that point. All right. Anything else that you can think of that you do or do not want in a goth significant other that we haven't covered yet? Okay. Mm-hmm. 
right? Good. Right, any other questions for me at all? All right then, well, that concludes our questionnaire for you. I know it's quite a lot of questions, you did a good job. <laughs> now, what happens next? I will send off your questionnaire to our professional matchmakers, and they will compare your answers with all of the different goth partners that we have. So they will match you with the very best matches. Generally, within one to two weeks, you'll get a response. And generally, we send one person at a time. We don't want to confuse you too much with having to choose between people like you're choosing a new jacket to wear or something like that. So we really just send one at a time. You read through their bio and say, yes, I would like to meet them, or no, I'm not really interested. What else you got? <laughs> and then we'll send you another one if that doesn't work out. All right. And then we will help you facilitate a first meeting, a first date. And then after that, it's up to you. That sound all right? Good, good. We do have a very high success rate, so I am very confident that you will find a perfect goth significant other for you. All right, well. Thank you so much for coming in today, answering all of my questions. Stay spooky.